In Sarasota County, 21,000 school kids depend on free or reduced lunches. But when summer comes, they need your help. All Faith Food Bank encourages you to empty your shelves and make a cash gift so no child in our community goes hungry this summer. And welcome to School Matters. I'm Leanne McIntyre. When school ends, hunger begins for students no longer on school meal programs. Last year, 21,000 children and their families needed help bridging that food gap. And two organizations came together to help. Beverly Gerard, the Director of Food and Nutrition Services for the Sarasota County School District. And with us today, Sandra Frank, the Chief Executive Officer of the All Faiths Food Bank. So, Thank you very much for joining Thank us today, Thank you for today, inviting Sandra. me again. Yes. Um, so 2014 yes. was the rollout mm -hmm. of the Campaign for Summer Hunger. Yes. Why don't you share with us briefly um, why that campaign began? Yes. Uh, it, it, it came about for a number of reasons. Uh, one having to do with the cyclical nature of donations in terms of food and funds. And the other is our, our awareness and the school district's concern about kids in the summer, those who are um, in the school meal programs, not having access. In fact, that's the time of year when they're most likely to be hungry. So the campaign uh, came about because of those two needs. Okay, and that um, that food gap of the children we're talking about is the free and reduced lunch program. Is correct, that what we're referring correct. to? Correct. Uh, and uh, the children are eligible. Many are eligible for the breakfast and lunch programs. I think they've introduced a supper program now. But as we say, when when the school year ends, hunger begins, and the children disperse. We don't know where they are, and and the challenge is finding the kids and then getting wholesome, healthy meals to them. So we worked very, very hard last year in partnership with the school district to identify additional sites, mm -hmm. as well as create a new backpack program for the summer and implement our very successful mobile pantries to take food out to the areas that were underserved, considered food deserts, or where we knew there were a lot of children whose families were, were low income and possibly eligible for the programs. The programs. So um, what did you learn from what you did last year that you're able to do this year? I mean, especially talking about um, filling the food shelves, the backpack program, and your yes. mobile program. A couple of things that we learned. Um, one was that we needed to let families know earlier before the school year ended mm -hmm. about the availability of the programs. We needed to let them know that the, that the meals were without charge. There was no fee for this. And that within walking distance, there were so many sites within walking distance, they can find food for their child and meals for their child and their family. A lot of lessons learned, mm -hmm. and uh, we found out what was successful, what was less successful, and we're going to do even more, even better this mm -hmm. year in 2015. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, what are a couple of those things that uh, that you learned that were positive that you're going to do again this year for these? these families? Well, we uh, think thinking about there being a program, a meal program, as well as the backpack and mobile pantry program. With the meal program, last year we helped grow the number of sites from about 38 to well over 50. Mm -hmm. We found that if there was programming in those sites, the children were most likely, the parents were most likely to allow the kids to attend. So this year we're looking at adding programs to some mm -hmm. of the, the lower, lower attending, attendance uh, sites. We're looking at things like assisting with tuition because sometimes the tuition is a barrier mm -hmm. uh, in order to increase the number of kids going to the meal sites. Mm -hmm. With the backpack and the mobile pantries, just pure success there. And we will have more mobile pantries and more backpack opportunities for kids this summer. This summer, great, great. And I know um, we talk about food deserts, um, hunger, uh, Right. Mm -hmm. So why don't you uh, maybe explain what that is mm -hmm. for some people who maybe have heard it and don't know what it means, and how many do we? How many such zones do we actually have yes. in Sarasota County? So food deserts are described as those areas where there is not immediate, and they have a, a formula for this: immediate access to a, a grocery store. Mm. 
and places as diverse as Newtown and Northport have food deserts. They are determined not by the food bank or by the school system, they are determined by the Florida Department of Agriculture and they're determined by national standards. And I think we have seven or nine, believe it or not, seven or nine food deserts here in, in Sarasota. Hmm. Uh, so that's what we look at when we implement our mobile pantries and backpack programs is where is there a concentration of kids in food deserts, low-income in, low neighborhoods, and we target those with this, this uh, in intervention to provide mm. food over the summer. The two organizations working together, yes. which is wonderful, what is it that perhaps we want to outreach to the community? What can the community do to help? As always, they can help by donating food. Uh, and the campaign, the campaign against summer hunger actually kicks off March 31. And like last year, it's only 40 days. It's that short. Hmm. But it is so successful because the, com the community really understands. They super responded last year in terms of uh, donating food and funds to support. The other thing that was so marvelous about last year is the way the community united to help feed these kids. There were some 60 or 70 agencies and entities who embraced this issue and became part of feeding kids over the summer. So while the district and, and the All Faith Food Bank did partner, the whole community united around this issue. Hmm. So we'll be doing it again. It launches March 31. It ends May 9. And you'll be seeing and hearing a great deal about it. Uh, we're asking that folks in that time period donate food and funds to support the campaign and then after that point we really need the assistance in spreading the word throughout the community to families who have kids that these meals and this food is available all summer long it's available there's no charge and where the locations are and as I said that's one of the lessons learned last year mm -hmm. we need to start now and keep it going through the entire summer, summer. and right. reach, out, reach out to families through the whole summer to let them know right. So people in, in neighborhoods could, you know, pay attention um, and know their neighbors, and if they know their neighbors are uh, in need, let them know. Okay, no. um, are you, now, we're, and we're doing this program, which will run on the channel and uh, is available on YouTube uh, for, for you to share with mm -hmm. other agencies and agencies to share. Are you going to do any sort of you know, neighborhood flyers or what other kind of publicity mm -hmm. um, do you think you'll have out there that people can look out for? The, uh, actually, after March 31, you'll see the logos and the campaign materials all over the community and throughout the media. Uh, announcing the campaign against summer hunger. And then the actual sites, dates, times, locations, or uh, that kind of information, a little more detail, mm -hmm. uh, would be available either through All Faith Food Bank or through the school, school district. district. That would also be okay. available. What kind of foods are in your mobile truck? Are you, are, are, you, are we being able to partner with some of the local farmers um, that, you know, farm to table, program that mm -hmm. everybody talks about. Is, is any of that working with, mm -hmm. with filling the hunger gap? That's a wonderful opportunity for us is the, the local growers. Mm -hmm. So we do have uh, many who do contribute, including some of the organic growers, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Uh, and our retailers and distribution centers are tremendously supportive, tremendously supportive. Uh, and we co actually we couldn't do it without their help as well. So mm -hmm. as I said, the whole community comes together. Individuals are donating, the retailers, the stores, the growers, all coming together to help feed kids over the summer. It's 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 what you want to see. <laughs> right. It's very it's very important. And and what a lot of the public doesn't also know is that when we talk about free and reduced lunch, and these numbers of 21,000 mm -hmm. children, is that approximately 50 percent of that school children in Sarasota County are on free and reduced yes. lunch. So there is a level of, of poverty there um, that is not necessarily seen. Mm -hmm. And um, you know a lot of data that, that talks about how uh, hunger is a, is, a, is a contributing factor to not learning. So mm -hmm. the yes. healthier you yes. can keep a child, the better they're, they're going to do in school. The better they're going to perform. The, the, the better fed they are, the better they're going to perform in school. and and the better the chance they'll start school prepared in mm -hmm. the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, the 50% the is, is really important. I don't think people know that. Mm -hmm. And these are families who are working, but not enough to make ends meet. 50% right. of the kids. One of the lessons learned last year, we actually collected data on the families who were attending. Uh, about half of them had kids under four mm. who aren't in that 21,000 number. They aren't counted. They right? aren't counted in that 21,000. Mm -hmm. So programs this year include working with the Early Learning Coalition, mm -hmm. the child care providers, 
uh, Head Start, Early Head Start to reach the younger population, mm -hmm. the younger kids as mm -hmm. well. Right. Oh. So that's something for the public also to keep in mind is when you're talking about children, you know, the, the age uh, range that you're talking about and the types of foods um, that are going to be needed because, you know, a four-year-old uh, is going to willingly eat something yes. different than perhaps a, a high school student. So there's there's a long, a lot range of food mm -hmm. that's also mm -hmm. needed. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing this information with our community and the and such importance in, in being able to take care of the children of Sarasota County. And so community, we've, we've put out a call to action and we will provide the information on your screen of how you can reach out and help fill that hunger gap with the children of Sarasota County this summer. Thank you very much. In Sarasota County, 21,000 school kids depend on free or reduced lunches. But when summer comes, they need your help. All Faith Food Bank encourages you to empty your shelves and make a cash gift so no child in our community goes hungry this summer.